Hey yo! And what is up, gang? Thank you so much for joining us back on the channel today. The WWE is possibly taking steps in the right direction moving forward by changing their course of action as it pertains to one Roman Reigns. However, they have taken two colossal steps back in this reviewer's opinion on its programming in general by canceling one of the best shows on the WWE Network. And we are here right now to talk about all of that right here, right now on the Sledgehammer. It's over here. Wrestling show. Dig it. Let's do this, people. Okay, boys and girls, here we go. Welcome back, everybody, once again to the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show, right here on Sledgehammer TV, only available on YouTube.com. I am your host, Nick Nightmare. This right here is the undisputed champion of microphones, Blue to Snowball Microphone, your world heavyweight champion, now and forever in the world of microphones. We are here today with a great show. I'm more fired up. I love doing Sunday shows. I don't know why. Today is Sunday, July the 16th, and tonight is a very special night. And it's not wrestling related, I'm sorry, but tonight is the premiere of the final season of Game of Thrones. And we are totally, totally looking forward to that. We are celebrating the right way. We got a nice crispy cold beverage. We don't get paid sponsorships, so even though you know by looking at the bottle if you're a drinker, you know what I'm drinking. But I ain't going to tell you what I'm drinking. And we're not here to worry about what I'm drinking. And we're not here to worry about Game of Thrones. Although it's going to be fucking awesome and I can't wait. And you know what? As we're talking about that for a second, let me know in the comments below, you guys. I love my followers. I love my subscribers. We have gotten a lot of new subscribers over the course of the last week. And I want to know if you would like to hear my thoughts on the final season of Game of Thrones each and every single week. Because it's been a while since we've been doing the It's True Hollywood review, which is available on this channel. I only have two episodes because I didn't get uh, a large turnout, a, a good response for that. But if every single one of you are tuning in right now and you want to see some Game of Thrones reviews from your boy Nick Nightmare and his expert analysis, just let me know in the comments below. Use the hashtag G-O-T. This way I know that you who use that hashtag will definitely be tuning in to a Game of Thrones review. Now that that's been said, and we will push that aside, and we are going to get to the reason we're all here, which is for the breaking news in the world of professional wrestling. And it's been a, I wouldn't say a news-heavy week, but the two items that we are going to talk about today are very big, very big news. We're going to start off with the Talking Smack situation. Now, the WWE has gone and canceled one of its greatest creations. I loved Talking Smack. It was a, a platform and an outlet for talent to work on their character, refine their mic skills, work one-on-one -on -one in a live platform, going against, you know, that commentary team, a great team, of Renee Young and Daniel Bryan, and even when Daniel was out, they would sub with JBL or Shane McMahon or whoever was available at the time. It was a fantastic program. And I really, really believed it helped to develop guys like Baron Corbin and to, uh, obviously, if you were watching the show, you know what it did for a guy like The Miz, who was allowed to go out there three to five minutes and just say whatever the hell you want. Of course, everything was okayed, beforehand, you know, and there was a, a gist of what was going to be said, but this guy just went out there and riffed, and he showed you why the Miz character is one of the best characters on television. And Talking Smack being cancelled is one of the worst decisions they could have done. It was one of the ways that SmackDown differentiated itself from Raw. I know at the beginning they both had after shows, but Talking Smack was the only one to remain. 
and it was based in reality. And when you have a wrestling show that is somewhat based in reality, it becomes compelling television. You could see an example of that by watching the Raw Talk after the last pay-per-view. Great balls of shit. When Sasha Banks was out there talking about her sketchy history with Alexa Bliss going off and, and, and enlightening us on a situation that we are not really privy to. Well, most of us aren't. I mean, I've heard about this before. But they're going to use that now in developing this storyline between Sasha Banks and Alexa Bliss. That is the magic of a show like Talking Smack. And I cannot believe that this has gone down. Let's go to the report, which I have up right here. One of the staples of the WWE Network's original programming is having its broadcast schedule significantly reduced. Yeah, I, all right. I may have gone off the handle. I said canceled. It's not technically canceled. It's just not going to be every single week as we are going to reveal to you here in this article. The WWE has issued a statement yesterday confirming that Talking Smack will no longer air weekly and will instead only be shown after SmackDown exclusive pay-per-views. And I quote, We continuously review WWE Network's programming lineup based on a variety of factors, including viewership and subscriber research. Talking Smack and Raw Talk will air following pay-per-view events, and Tuesday will continue to feature 205 Live. Talking Smack was one of the elements that helped SmackDown differentiate itself from Raw after last summer's brand split, as I said before I started reading this article. With Renee Young and Daniel Bryan as the co-hosts of the show, it furthered storylines and provided an outlet for advanced character development. Just by reading that statement to you guys, why would you want to limit this show? Doesn't make any sense. Let's continue. The most memorable moment of Talking Smack's weekly run was a segment that attempted to blur the lines between storyline and reality as Daniel Bryan and The Miz got into heated exchanges, especially the one on August the 23rd, 2016. After Bryan insulted The Miz's in-ring style, The Miz dared him to quit and go back to the indies. It was tremendous. It was tremendous. It was actually the first episode that made me realize that Talking Smack cannot be missed because you just never really know what's going to happen in a live studio environment when given to the likes of The Miz and Daniel Bryan. It was fucking magical. Let's go on again. When 205 Live debuted on the network, Talking Smack was moved back one hour and was taped while 205 Live was going on. Talking Smack host Renee Young is clearly bummed out about the show being moved to a once-a-month affair, and she opened up about it after receiving the unfortunate use. news. News, I'm sorry. Young tweeted, Really disappointed about Talking Smack? We tried to make that show great, and you did. You succeeded, Renee Young. Guess I'll go back to welcoming my guest at this time. As we previously reported, the backstage interviewer wasn't given a heads up. How fucked up is that? Nobody told Renee Young or Daniel Bryan that this show was being reduced. They found out on Twitter at the exact same time as the rest of us. The show isn't going away full time. WWE says it will still be on after pay-per-views. This is Another one of these stories that absolutely makes me question the sanity of everybody in charge of the WWE. I don't understand what the purpose is. There are rumors going around saying that it's cost cutting. Cost cutting? How much could it possibly fucking cost you to run Talking Smack? How about this? How about you set up the fucking stage or whatever you want to call it, the set, right? You set it up while SmackDown's on the air, what else is the guys doing? I mean, I'm sure everybody's got their jobs during the show, but obviously it's somebody's job to set up the sets. So let's get him at the start of SmackDown to set up the fucking set. And then, if you don't want to have it live to reduce the costs of broadcasting live onto the network, while SmackDown is going on, why don't you record segments? Why don't you have somebody coming right from the ring? Come out from the ring all sweaty and fucking gross, and then come take a seat next to Daniel Bryan, and then have them fucking talk about stupid shit, and then you air it as soon as SmackDown's over. Glaring, glaring mistakes in my eyes are, one, The Miz being moved to Raw, 
definitely hurt Talking Smack. And two, as they alluded to in the article, 205 Live being put live right after SmackDown. A bulk of the viewers, much like myself, would have much rathered have Talking Smack follow SmackDown as it was initially doing, and then fucking air 205 Live taped. Just because you call the show live doesn't mean it has to technically be live. By pigeonholing yourself into that live category, you've made the show suck beyond all recognition. There is no reason why this show shouldn't be taped before SmackDown goes off the air, have a special match after SmackDown goes on while talking smack is fucking being broadcast live, and then you piece that together in a few minutes and put that up at 10 o'clock. Well, you, I'm sorry, 11 o'clock, because Talking Smack would have the 10 o'clock hour. You have a whole hour to edit your pieces together. You have a professional team that has paid big money to do this kind of shit. I'm sure they could assemble a show within a one-hour time limit, especially if it's only a 45-minute show. All the decisions here are absolutely not making sense to me as it pertains to this particular um category that we're talking about, the talking smack situation. I just don't understand. Cost cutting? How much could it actually cost to run this show? As I was saying before, everything's already there. All the talent is already there. All the people that need to run the cameras and stuff are already there. The guy that builds the set is already there. They're all there. So how is it costing you that much more? If it's costing you for having to run the electricity? Are you having to spend extra money for having time in the building? Like, I don't understand how that would be cost-effective to reduce this show when it's absolutely already set up for you. If you don't want to have them set up the set, just have Ray and Daniel standing in front of a fucking green screen. Have them standing in the corner with a green screen and a cameraman and then just send people in to talk to them. It would be just as organic, just as natural, and just as great. You don't need a big fancy set to sell me a show. You just have to have great content, which is what we try to do here on the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show. Good content. It doesn't matter what I, all the bells and whistles I put around if I have pictures coming up at the moment, which this episode will not have any special effects or any pictures coming up. It's just a, a creative decision on my part. And the creative decisions on the part of the WWE as pertaining to Talking Smack just absolutely suck. I, I already signed a petition. I'm hoping that the fan backlash is great and that they will actually allow this show to continue. I don't believe that will be the case. I think Talking Smack is now going to be what it is. It's going to be the post-pay-per-view show. And we'll just have to deal with that and accept it for what it is. And I will be excited to see it each and every month. And I will look forward to the promos and the interviews. But most likely, being that they're reducing it at this scale already, it probably won't be a half an hour. It'll probably be shot down to like a 10-minute afterthought type of show, so they don't have to run it that long. They've been cutting the pyro from all the shows. I don't understand what they're doing. Not that it's necessary, but when you become accustomed to a certain thing, and then it's not there, it makes you question why. And I, I can't see how they're not making money. Between the network and the subscriptions and all the advertising that I have to sit through each and every Monday and Tuesday, how is the WWE not making money? They've got to be making money hand over fist. The merchandise sales spiking up and down. But they have sponsorships. They have paid advertisers. They have paid subscriptions coming to them on a monthly basis. There is no way they're in the red. There's no way they're even near the red. Why they would want to cut costs and make a show such as Talking Smack a victim of this cutting is just beyond me. The same holds true for the show Legends. They, they cut Legends with JBL. Why? It was a great show. Based in reality. Talking about real things. Talking about the behind the scenes. Talking about people's careers. It was a great show. And they canceled that. Why? Because it costs so much to sit JBL in a fucking chair in front of a fucking wall with a light and a camera guy? If you want to minimalize everything and just make make it a one-camera show. Make it a one-camera deal. 
have them sit and brook it like me. Do you see any fancy camera angles and all this shit? No, but I still got you subscribers and all you new viewers coming in, subscribing on a daily basis, because what I offer you is content. A good content, a good, nice, meaty steak, right on a delicious, beautifully presented plate that we can call breaking news. That's all we're going to say about the situation. Hopefully, this is not the beginning of a trend where they're just going to end all these great shows that are reality-based. Not Total Divas, which is scripted. And I know it's obviously reality to a point, but it's majority scripted. That's not real. It's a show that I watch for its entertainment value and to see behind the cameras because that's what I enjoy. And shows like Talking Smack and Legends from, with JBL and all these other shows that are slowly being cut from WWE's production schedule is just, it's, it's terrible for me. For a guy like me that loves to delve in head first and know everything and watch character progression and see guys start breaking through the glass ceiling and... and this way I can see from my own eyes. All right, this guy's got it. This guy's don't got it. We don't allow these guys to talk anymore. We hand them a script and we make them read. So nobody knows how they're really feeling inside. You can't gauge how a performer's feeling from their performance on Raw or SmackDown, but you could on Talking Smack. And now, as far as a weekly show that's being taken away from us on, on SmackDown every single Tuesday, we'll have to just watch it. After the pay-per-views, each and every month. And now, we are going to move on to our main story, which has tons of good and tons of bad at the same time. The only bad about it is that it proves that the WWE's had their heads up their ass and that they've had no idea what they've been doing for the last four years. As finally, now, the WWE are supposedly changing their minds on their direction with Roman Reigns and his main event at WrestleMania 34 versus the Beast, Brock Lesnar. This came to us from WrestlingNewsWorld.com and I cannot wait to see how this plays out. If this is indeed true and the facts that they have stated are actually facts and that this is actually going to go down. It's going to be a very interesting year in the WWE. Apparently, the merchandise sales, maybe as a whole, are down. Roman Reigns does not have that second spot because John Cena is the top spot. Come on. Roman Reigns was number two. And it has been declining. It has been on a steady decline. He's continued to be booed on television and is now starting to trickle over into house shows where he has previously been receiving much more positive reviews and feedback from the WWE Universe. But it seems as if the fans are starting to smarten up. People who have unsubscribed from the network when questioned through a survey by the WWE stated reasons having to do with Roman Reigns. None of these particular reasons have been made public, but he has been said to be the basis for the reason for a said subscriber to have canceled their subscription. I don't know exactly what that means, but I guess certain people are just tired of seeing Roman Reigns and they're canceling their network subscriptions. I didn't know it was getting to that point. And that's just crazy. When you factor all these things in together, they would be crazy to not decide to change directions. They have so much talent to choose from. And it has been clear over the course of the last three years that Roman Reigns is not the guy. We have nobody to blame but ourselves, you guys. You need to understand that we did this because the WWE foolishly thought that we would want to see Dave Batista win the Royal Rumble a few years back. And when Roman Reigns was the only one left standing opposed Dave Batista in the Royal Rumble, we, as a collective fan base, wanted Roman Reigns to win. 
Why did we want him to win? Because we didn't want to see Batista in the main event of WrestleMania. And what ended up happening? The WWE gave the win to Batista. Daniel Bryan was not entered in the Royal Rumble. The fans were furious. Never in my life have I ever heard Rey Mysterio be booed to the level he was booed at that night when he came out at number 30. And now there was no chance for Daniel Bryan to be a surprise entrant. Dave Batista would go on to win that Royal Rumble. And when him and Roman were the final two, the fans cheered for Roman by default. And Vince McMahon and his goons over there, who obviously had a Roman Reigns agenda on deck and in their plans for the immediate future, saw that as this is our opportunity to shoot this guy to the top. And they failed at every single turn. They didn't change his music. They didn't change his look. They didn't change anything about him. They made him a one-man shield. They gave him the shield's music. They didn't change it up at all. They left him in his shield outfit. They made him stale and boring. Whereas the other two guys went off to be at least a little bit different and had much more success than Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns is the sole member of the Shield to have not changed a lick. Not a friggin' lick since the Shield broke up. And it's done nothing but hurt the character. And it's brought us full circle to this moment right now. Where I don't know exactly what it is that made the light bulb go off in Creative's head, but they're finally, finally going to start to concede to the fact that they have failed in this Roman Reigns experiment. And they are going to be looking to transition him from the main event picture. Obviously, nobody wants to see him versus Brock again at WrestleMania 34. I would much rather see Roman Reigns go against Samoa Joe for the Universal Championship. Actually, I wouldn't want to see him go up for the championship at all because odds are that they will coronate him once again by making him win the title again. You make him turn heel. Maybe you allow him to align himself with Joe. Maybe they form some type of Samoan bond. Some sort of a two-man power team or whatever like Triple H and Austin did many years ago. And then you get him over that way. And then, down the line, when people start to like this new version of Roman, you can decide to turn him face and then maybe start this experiment over again as the fans will finally be behind you. But as of right now, it has been nothing but a complete and total failure when it comes to Roman Reigns. And he needs to stop worrying about kicking Enzo off the bus for being loud and rambunctious and start worrying about the WWE and where they're going to be kicking him down the card. I can only hope that they just reshuffle his whole deck, change his whole look, change the image, and send him out fresh. Send him out new. Do different things. Make him fight different people. Maybe a move to SmackDown is in order for him. Just to make him new. Make it fresh. Change things up. I don't know what the future holds for Roman Reigns. But just the simple fact that they are considering finally making some changes and taking him out of the position that he's in, which nobody wants to see him in in the first place, is a huge, huge step forward. For the company as a whole. The man that should be at the top. Is AJ Styles. Until maybe Kenny Omega comes in. And believe me. If you have not seen anything. That Kenny Omega has done. Trust me when I tell you. This man. Is going to be. The face of the WWE. If and when. He ever decides to grace them. With his one winged angel. And everything that he brings with him. Because he's fucking amazing. He speaks multiple languages. He's got the look. He's got the charisma. He's got the talent in the ring to believe that he's a champion. So I can only hope for Kenny Omega's arrival at some point. But let's not jump too far ahead of ourselves. And let's just be satisfied with the fact 
that they're thinking about changing their direction with Roman Reigns. We're all going to have to wait and see just what road they send the big dog down. Hopefully, it's at least something that we want to see. Not what we've been getting from Roman Reigns and the WWE. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to this episode, this edition of the Breaking News. Don't forget, if you have not, to please subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed everything that we did here today. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up for me. Hit that like button. Let's me know that you like what I'm doing. Don't forget also, if you want to hear some Game of Thrones news, hashtag G-O-T right down there in the comments below. Thank you again so much for joining us for this show. It, two tremendous stories. Two very big things going on. I've been trying to get this show to you for the last two days. Not for nothing. So hopefully you all joined us. Even though it's a little uh, little bit late. Just a little late. A little tardy on the news here. But better late than never. Right here on the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show. I am Nick Nightmare. This is the undisputed champion of microphones, Baloo the Snowball. <laughs> and that is going to wrap it up because me and the champ are out of here. And thank you for watching today's episode of the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show. And we will see you next time. Thank you for watching.